In the year 21X, Lord Boxman opened a store to arm his robot horde. But the heroes of Lakewood Plaza are ready to fight! Are ready to fight. Are ready to fight. Are ready to Podcast. KO, I've never been wrong in my entire life. In this week's episode of Lakewood Podcast Turbo, I'm your host, Wyatt, and eh, you go ahead. I got some work to not do. Who is here with me today, as always? It's Buster, who's joining Rad's Hoedown. <laughs> the impromptu hoedown? Yeah, <laughs> that was my favorite part of these week's episodes. <laughs> I the it's so good the the like off key clapping yeah. that like KO would do yeah it's just so good but we're here to talk about episodes five and six the end of this first story arc uh, for OK KO so for me uh, you know watching this back in August of 2017 this was when like I was 100 percent like okay. I love this show. I will keep watching it as much as I possibly can. Uh, these were the episodes that really like sold me on it. Like, the, I mean, I loved all of the episodes up until this point, but this was when it like became clear to me that this was a show 100% worth investing my like patience and emotions into in a lot mm-hmm. of ways. Uh, especially episode six, which we'll, we'll get to uh, later in the podcast. Oh, yeah. But it's um, a good one. Yeah, but yeah, it was just like, it felt like, um, I don't know, like some cartoons can have like sort of a rocky start to a first season where you're like, oh, I see the potential. I'm going to keep watching it. But, you know, uh, you know, these episodes aren't so good. Rewatching these, you know, over and over again (laughs) over the years, I'm like, these are still like, yeah, the later stuff is really good. But season one in general is just like a full, complete show in yeah. and of itself. In, in this first batch of episodes is like just a really fantastic start to the season. And it like, again, I think it was like a brilliant idea for them to produce it out of order. So it just like started on the right foot. Yeah, you know? it hits the ground running. Mm-hmm. So first episode, uh, uh, Jethro's All Yours. Uh, boarded by Ryan Shannon and Parker Simmons. Yeah. And, uh, you know, second episode that they boarded together. And this one, you know, uh, it's it's a rad and KO focused episode, similar to last time when we did one that was an Enid and KO focused episode. Mm-hmm. So we get to see, like, like, what is their relationship when they're on their own? Not like all three of them as a unit and everything. Uh, and we're kind of like the establishing scene with the hoedown and everything is like, okay, we see that KO is kind of like imperceptive, a little bit goofy and naive, you know, not, and I, again, I wouldn't quite call him dumb, but like it establishes in this episode, the, the seed of doubt in the viewers minds to be like, oh, maybe KO is simple. Like, you know, yeah. uh, Rad would like make fun of him for. And, like, like, that's actually, like, a really good kind of, like, lesson about, like, how simple words could hurt. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like, I mean, the word simple hurts KO, but it's, like, sometimes yeah. how you, like, overthink, like, the littlest things in, like, yeah. sentences. Especially with, like, friends or loved ones and yeah. stuff. And it's, like... Oh, I, I think this episode is really surprising, like, just with the rest of the series. Because it's weird to see KO and Rad have, like, a contentious relationship and the K yeah. will be like upset and like hurt by Cuz usually it's that... Rad who's upset. Yeah. And and like he's like KO like has like emotions and gets hurt and gets betrayed, you know, that that uh happens really hard at the end of the series. Uh but like you know, he normally is kind of like a very like he just lets things roll off his back sort of kid like or he just doesn't even notice that he's being picked on or anything like that that happened in the last episode you know he didn't realize he was being picked on by like red action and droop and drag yeah uh, but i think it hurts a bit more because it's like it's his friend you know yeah and he's starting to like 
like he starts to project himself onto Jethro, who is a new one of the new box bots. And yeah, and I a, love him. Yeah, Jethro is hilarious. It's like the tiny little tank. It's like a mook thing that you would fight in like a Mega Man game. It's like the yeah. Metools. I was thinking Mega like Goombas Man. from Super yeah, Mario like Brothers. Yeah, very similar to, to Goombas or the Met Tools in Mega Man, where it's just like the, the grunt, like whatever stupid enemy that just, yeah, just walks in one path forward, you know, and backward. Yeah, to teach you the game mechanics and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, like, just such a great idea. And the, the, the it's just so funny to have, like, Jets are just so funny because of how slow and ineffective he is. It's like and that this is the first episode that introduces him. And it just makes me think, like, what the hell was the purpose of this robot, like, at all? Because it's so worthless. <laughs> it just seems like it's a gag like, machine. Yeah. <laughs> like, for the right, like, maybe, like, in-universe to refer yeah. to. Because, like, like, Boxman is, like, unaware of his incompetence, you know? Yeah. Like, so, to... Like, this is, he probably thinks of this as, like, a genius idea. Uh, yeah. And, like, in this episode, it is, like, oh, the Jethro's just keep getting bigger and bigger until there's a mega Jethro. Yeah. Uh, which is very funny. Yeah. Oh, I am Jethro. Also, just his, like, yeah, one the... repeated line. <laughs> yeah, very, very, he is, like, very action figure-esque, you know. Yeah, he's repeating the Pull the, the string, there's again. a snake in my mm-hmm. boot type beat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Marge! Uh, yeah, the uh, it's like that, but with with it's it makes sense that Kaya would immediately like after you know he's like oh you guys Red is like you can just take care of the scraps you know you can take care of this guy he's simple and you're simple uh, and then he yeah he just starts to overthink it and he starts to like project himself onto Jethro and starts to like be invested in Jethro being like a cool dangerous robot. That's like yeah. really complicated, and you know, like uh, takes a while to take down because he's been equated to him. Uh, I think like that moment where he beats a bunch of them and then goes back into the store and is just like, "I'm not simple." <laughs> to Rad is like one cute and two like just a great character beat again yeah. to have like, oh, they have these characters. You know, the purpose of the Enid episode, episode three was, like, K.O. vicariously teaches Enid that, like, people can grow and change, like, mm-hmm. s- subtly over time. It doesn't need to be a big thing that happens, like, all at once. Whereas, like, this is, like, Rad <laughs> is, a, is an inconsiderate jerk, as he is, and, like, he kind of learns by the end of the episode that, like, you know, not everybody is 100% okay with the way that he talks, you know, and, like, interacts with them. There are some people that, like, may misinterpret what he's saying or, like, overthink what he's saying and, like, just kind of, like, spin off into this sort of anxiety attack that he has, you know. So, yeah, I think, I don't know, I I think uh, it, like, is, like, a really great, (laughs) like, just starter episode for uh, their relationship, and we'll get some like really good rad yeah. episodes uh, as we go. I love. He's probably my favorite of like the yeah, main. Rad three. does seem like a character you'd like a hundred percent like love. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, he, his design is basically a Piccolo reference. So. Oh yeah, very Piccolo. I just love very competent idiots or like very <laughs> confident idiots, where yeah. it's like like people that are like one hundred percent sure that they're amazing and awesome but are complete idiots like egotistical always, bastards yeah like that i just love that stuff that's why i love Boxman. but like mm-hmm. he's my favorite character of the whole show but like out of the bodega men <laughs> rad is my favorite for sure though enid like and we'll get to this as it goes on but i very much relate to her uh oh. and i very much relate to ko quite a bit because i you know uh, with the TKO episode that we'll get to in a while, like that's like I relate hardcore <laughs> to that. So in that entire plot line, yeah, that's a that's a whole thing. Mm. Uh, but also like uh, speak of the Mega Jeffro thing, Jake's music when like they're fighting Mega Jeffro, that goes like that's like whoa, like, yeah. You know, it's oh, like, yeah. like the music's already been good, but like now mm. it's like it's like got like a little. A, boost you know a little yeah. 
it's cool to see ko like even if jethro is like pathetically you know just like a worthless moving garbage can like seeing like him fight and like effortlessly destroy them is like a cool like oh even over these just a few days he has grown enough that he can beat like these little mook robots yeah he, he doesn't struggle with them or anything he's able to like easily handle them uh, I like the confrontation with the Mega Jethro in that it's like very like a uh, you know like Kirby's Adventure type going around in a circle like yeah screwing up. Oh yeah, that, 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 that's what it reminded me of. I know it reminded mm. me, the court screw like sequence reminded me of something mm. like yeah Kirby. I mean, a yeah. lot of video games have court screw sequences, so it's like, yeah. Really... I think I think of that just because it's like a crazy thing on an NES game, you know, oh, that you don't expect yeah. to see. Yeah, Kirby's um, Adventure is wild for an NES game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's probably my favorite NES game, honestly. Like that. Yeah. Mega Man 3, uh, Ninja Gaiden. There you go. That's Those are the three good NES games. Uh, <laughs> oh, Mario 2 and 3 are also good. Yeah. And um, Metroid. You know what? Fuck you. Metroid is good <laughs> on the NES. <laughs> I've only played Zero Mission, so I wouldn't yeah, know. Yeah, people, people are so mean. The NES Metroid, but it doesn't deserve it. Uh, the the I love that the resolution being that Jethro is as shallow and stupid and simple on the inside as he is on the outside. There is no inner depth. He is just a fucking thing that moves forward <laughs> in a straight line, and it's just the way they defeat him is by moving it in reverse. Yeah. It's so good because then it forces the message to be more nuanced than, see, people have inner depths beyond blah, blah, blah. You know, it becomes Rad, you know, like I said before, Rad realizing to, like, kind of choose his words more wisely, but also that, like, for KO to realize, look, you and that thing aren't the same. Yeah, you it's know, kind of like a projecting inverse... yourself onto it. It's kind yeah. of like a commentary slash, like, deconstruction of that whole, like, oh, the hero and villain are, like, two sides of the same coin. No, sometimes the, the villain's just a bastard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sometimes the villain is just a dumb robot that has no no brain and no intelligence or anything, you know? Yeah. Just says, I am Jethro, and moves forward. Yeah. Uh, so, like... I Who think is Jethro like, voiced by? I have no... I honestly have no idea. I'm gonna I look do. this up. <laughs> Because, because there is an episode where there is a Jethro who talks in, like, full sentences and has intelligence and everything. I don't know if it's the same guy who does that I'm Jethro from look. I Am Jethro and... Uh, yeah. It is the same guy. It is Dave Herman, it seems. Cool. So, like, shout out to yeah, him. That... He does a really good, like, I Am Jethro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just very, very funny, very iconic, you know. But yeah, yeah, so episode five just like like a solid I foundation think, for Rad's growth. Yeah, I, I love the scene where he's explaining like how Ko and and Jethro are the same. He's using like the like rolling the can forward to knock over a soda bottle, but it never works. So he has to like <laughs> hit the bottle out of the way or like punch the ground to like yeah. jostle it. <laughs> so Big it falls mood. Down. Big yeah, mood of all the physics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, of course, Brandon gets his car destroyed. Oh, yeah, his freak car. out was very yeah. well animated. They, they, yeah. they, the animators went nuts on that. Mm. His mom's car gets destroyed. I like that when Jethro backs up into Boxmore, it, like, fucking explodes into, <laughs> like, like a gigantic nuclear explosion. And yet, Boxmore, of course, is totally fine in the next episode. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, like Boxmore, he can he can invent some shit. He probably has invented some like quick yeah. refixy upper mm. stuff. Yeah, that that's you know he probably easily replace it. But it's just funny that like sometimes the show has like hard continuity, but sometimes it's just like eh, if it's funny, yeah, fuck it. You know, here's just like a ridiculous non sequitur ending. Or something like that. This this episode doesn't have a non sequitur ending, but like that kind of thing, you know. Yeah, just like a consequence is funny, but we don't want to keep it. Yeah, but episode six is kind of like 
you know, it feels like the grand finale of, like, this opening arc. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, just Teo, like, we get introduced to him getting his pal card for the first time. Yeah, and which, again, I need to complain. The so perfect merchandising opportunity wasted. All right, let me move on. I know, I know it sucks. The, the, I'm not sure if you saw this, but, like, Ian on Twitter, like, a couple days ago, or I guess a month ago or whatever at this point, uh, was like, yeah, I mean, we had full plans to do merch for the show, but they, they like, genuinely were like, no, we don't want... Uh, why well, does... Between like, this and, like, the perfect merchandising of Symbiotic Titan that they could have done, why uh, does Cartoon Network hate toys? I don't know. I don't know. Because, like, they gave toys to, like, regular show and Adventure Time. Yeah, well, that's... You know, I think the, that was, like, only after they've proved to be popular, though. So exa- it's like... Yeah. But, yeah. like... A show like OK KO is made for to- it's like just such a it's such an easy cynical cash grab for toys that it's again like I mentioned in a previous episode but just making like the muscle toys like the Kinikuman <laughs> stuff just like do it do it that way it's it would be perfect to have like that kind of toy line but no they just didn't they just didn't do it and like pal cards it would have been cool uh, yeah. Even as, like, a, a thing that's exclusive to fucking Hot Topic, you know, or or Think Geek. Or I, I something would like willingly that. I go care. to a Hot Topic if there was PAL yeah. cards in there. You you, yeah. you, you you would actually caught me dead in a Hot Topic mm. looking for PAL cards. Because, like, with Steven, the only figure... I have, like, a couple of these, like, smaller figures. One of Amethyst, one of Connie, and one of Steven. Yeah. Uh, you know, but, like, there aren't, like, I would love, like, a Jasper figure. Are you fucking kidding me? I would, oh, I yeah. Would eat, I would eat that up, you know. Paradox. Like, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for, for OKKO, OK like, you know, obviously just, like, the main characters and everything, but, like, so many different side characters I would love to have a figure of. You know, Dendi, come on. Ah. I mean, she, she's going to get introduced, like, in a couple episodes here. Uh, but, like, either way, I don't know. Just, just we we got to move on. Yeah, the yeah, dream is dead. A... <laughs> yeah. I do like that the card, like, when it scans him, it says Ko instead of K-O. Because <laughs> I, I still hear people that say, okay, Ko, instead of okay, K-O. Yeah, like fun little to text-to-speech jokes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just, like... You know, like people that only kind of know about the show, like they know its existence, but they've never like watched it or or heard an episode or anything. So they're like, oh, yeah, the main character, Ko. Like if I see people reviewing the game, they'll call him Ko. So I like that. I think it's cute. Uh, first, This is the first appearance of Action News 52. Yeah. Reference to Dynamite the NES game. Yep. <laughs> Do you? Okay. Uh so Action 52 probably got its biggest spotlight because of the AVGN. Yeah. Right. But, like, you know, I was into the shitty game, watching angry YouTubers and stuff, like, well before his Action 52 episode. You know, I, mm. I was I got into the AVGN in, like, 2007. You know, so, like, there was a long period of time where I'm like, dude, James, he's got to do an Action 52 episode. It's going to be epic, bro. <laughs> And then, like, it was, like, an event when he not only did Action 52, but then did Cheetah Man 2 oh. afterwards. And, man, like, this sounds so, like, like man, I, I needed to be there, but I was, like, probably, like, I did not know how to use the internet at the time, so it's, like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Action 52, hilarious game. Just, like, I, like, that's, that's something I've always wanted to do, was making a show about Kusoge and just like bad games in general yeah like not from an angry perspective but from like a isn't this weird and funny isn't that just stop skeletons from fighting kind of kind of but like like he's talked about stuff like um what the hell there's a one shooter on the saturn you know uh that's like really fucking terrible uh but like he like derek will do things that are like weird ambitious or unnecessary punching weight uh but, like, I'm more talking about, like, I want to look at games like Hoshi wo Mirohito or Hana no Star Kaido on the NES. Just, like, these weird games that never got brought over to America. 
that are just like so bad that that's why they never got brought over and like in the past people would do like angry reviews of them because they suck but i want to do reviews that are or videos that are like i want to appreciate how weird and bizarre this shitty game is you know yeah. and, and, like talk about it in that perspective so like action 52 you know is the closest america has gotten to making a kuso game uh, yeah. so that, that's what i want to bring that up. and cheetah man 2 one of my all-time favorite shitty games for sure excellent soundtrack by the way that mm. the, the cheetah man theme just awesome uh <laughs> but yeah dynamite Watkins, a great secondary character she gets like a focus episode way later in the season yeah uh but either way like uh, this episode it's like a fairly typical cartoon plot uh, yeah. with the, like oh oh uh character gets an inflated ego because of like a misunderstanding or whatever and then it's tur- like turns out to be false and then they have to like reap what they sow uh but i think it's handled like the resolution is handled quite a bit differently oh yeah it's, it's way, way more that- wholesome yeah and it's like uh it's just an awesome episode first of all this is our first hints towards tko oh. in this episode which is great uh, like at the time, obviously, like I didn't really even know or think about that. But like when the TKO episode happened, I was like, "Oh, they that was referenced all the way back in like episode six. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. fact that like he when he gets angry while fighting uh, Big Daryl, <laughs> he like gets the like the purple electricity around him, the the eye shadow, you know, mm-hmm. and like the sharp teeth." and everything Ooh. at the time you can just like write that off as like oh it's a you know exaggerated expression it's just the cartoony thing to show that he's like angry uh and out of sorts but like those are it's specifically like this is tko yeah know? those it's traits of tko like, uh uh-huh. yeah it's like referencing his like inner anger and everything that will become like a huge plot point for the rest of the show yeah uh, also, like, Big Daryl. I love how, like, Daryl is piloting a mech of himself. That, that, yeah. that's, just, that's, just, that's just a Daryl, like, egotist moment, and I love it. Yeah. It's funny because later in the TKO episode, there's a Daryl that transforms into a giant Daryl. Oh. Instead of, like, piloting one. So, yeah. I love Daryl, like, kicking KO's ass, using his skull to write Get Wrecked into the pavement. You know, just, like, a lot of great little gags there. Uh, yeah and the fact that um i don't know like we said before the the episode's conclusion uh is like not as much about like oh you reap what you sow you know uh making amends with all the people in the plaza because you were like so braggadocious and egotistical even it's though like, like I'd, I'd argue kale wasn't really as braggadocious he was just yeah. like I, he was just very excited you know yeah like like it got there's elements of that there that's why it's like similar to that kind of uh, cartoon plot oh by the way this is boarded by stevie borbola and danny ducker Hmm. Uh, i think this is the first one yes uh and i think that like them ending it with like oh the whole plaza teams up together to form like one giant arm <laughs> like straight That's, out of the wonderful 101 yeah and then it's like you know that equals level 100 so they're able to defeat big daryl who's level negative 100 <laughs> just, uh, just such an awesome and dumb way to end it and and again it like really kind of set in stone for me like my excitement and my joy and everything uh for the show yeah, because they already established these characters like in the last two, like last couple batch of episodes. So now it's like, oh, everyone's working together, and so it's like it feels satisfying. It's like you know, yeah, it feel yeah, it feels like a little, it feels like the end of like a, a like back in like the eighties or nineties or whatever. They would sometimes do like, oh, here's like a five part pilot. You yeah, know, here's like, like a pilot movie or whatever. Like Transformers had that, or like uh, fucking Tailspin or something like that would have it it feels like this is the end of that you know where it's like oh all it kind of culminates into this mini climax uh where it's it's like this exciting cathartic thing but without like going too far into it because it hasn't quite like it still needs to build up more to like earn like the climax of the 
season finale. Yeah. Uh, but it can kind of like grasp that just a little bit uh, with mm-hmm. this. And, and uh, something that you'll learn about me very quick is, especially in like shonen and action things in general, to me, nothing is better than when you have like one foe that's way stronger than everybody else and it forces all of the characters to team up to fight them instead of having two people that are like equal power level or whatever constantly one-upping each other oh yeah that, that like, shit's awesome i love it in like uh that, that reminds me of like the ending of jojo part four where everyone has to team yeah. up to, oh like, my stop God. kira's po- that's time why loop. it's my favorite part same you know? <laughs> it's because of all the the characters are so good and yeah. that's why i thought the the part five kind of disappointing like i i don't like the ending to part five personally but mm-hmm. you know i mean it is like a cool ending but it is like I yeah. wish all of the characters were involved. Yeah, you know, in this like fight it could contribute way. something. Yeah. For Dragon Ball, my favorite arc is the Saiyan arc, or Saiyan if you're spicy. Uh, <laughs> and the reason I love it so much is because all the characters are fighting for their life against Nappa and Vegeta. You know, and like yeah, Goku shows up and he like kicks Nappa's ass and everything, and he's like, yeah, don't worry, I got this. I'll take on Vegeta on his own. But then Goku gets his ass kicked. Vegeta turns into a giant ape. It just, like, completely demolishes him. And then Krillin and Gohan have to come back to help him. And Yajirobe, who, like, everybody had just forgotten, like, oh, you know, whatever, some fuck-off character. All of them are essential to defeating Vegeta. Yeah. Yajirobe cuts off Vegeta's tail and, like, makes him transform out of his, like, giant monster form. And then, like, Krillin throwing the Genkidama, Gohan knocking it back at Vegeta and, like, seriously damaging him. And then later, like, Gohan being able to transform into the ape and then, like, delivering the final blows to Vegeta. It's just, like, all these characters coming together. It's, like, a brutal struggle, you know, and it feels like the whole cast is being used. Even the characters that die during the battle, like, you don't... Like, obviously, you're sad that the characters die, but, like, they don't feel like they're worthless to the struggle. Like, they all contribute in some small way during the entire fight. So, something, like, even just a little taste of something like that with this, all the characters in the plaza, like, coming together and helping KO, and that KO gets to be the one who, like, delivers the blow himself, and then he gets, like one-tenth of a, a level from it, yeah. <laughs> which is which is funny, but it's, like, you know, also cute to be like, oh, yeah, he's he's, begun. he's on his way. Yes, he's begun his journey. Uh, I don't know, it's just, like, just, like, an awesome, like, it made me so excited to see, like, where is the show going to go? Yeah, and it uh, goes places. Really, yeah, I had high hopes, and I feel like the show, like, demolished those fucking hopes. And oh, yeah. Completely, <laughs> like, it, like every season... In a good way. Yeah, like, every season just, like, gets, like, whoa, okay, we're going here, you know? With the, like, where they're taking the story and the characters and everything, and, like, the action is just so good. So, yeah, I feel like, man, this whole first batch of episodes, you know... Yeah, it was really fun to revisit them with like fresher mm-hmm. eyes and be like, yeah, this that's why I loved it. And I'm like, it just it's very comforting, and yeah. it just it just remind me, man, this show gives me so much serotonin with how like the vibes yeah. are just so <laughs> fun. Yeah, and there's like, man, I can't wait because now we're like in, we're like getting into like season one proper. Yeah. After this, I'm very excited to talk about some of those episodes because there there's like so many like little episodes throughout the first season that are like just phenomenal uh definitely want to get like some guests to come on and talk about certain episodes you know yeah maybe Maybe. might have some guests planned in the future i don't know what guests but like maybe yeah i I have a few in mind you know like uh, you know i have connections with some of the board artists i have connections with toby jones you know so i think that he would be glad to come on and talk about his show, I know he still loves OKKO OK dearly. Yeah. Uh, and But beyond, like, people that worked on the show, there's just, like, so many of our friends that are fans of the show. Uh, we could just be like, hey, come on in. Let's talk about it. Talk about your relationship with the show. 
I'd even Absolutely. love to give people who just like they don't know anything about the show like what like yeah. okay here's a random episode what do you think? <laughs> yeah, this is like somebody like yeah this would be a fun person to talk to about yeah. like, this thing, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, like so I have someone in mind for the Sonic episode, but I don't know I forgot who it was, but I know I had someone yeah. in mind for the Sonic. Episode. <laughs> yeah, but that oh, man Sonic episode that was such a good episode, but that's also like season three. So it's yeah, that's way, that's we we have time we have time way down the line. Uh, but yeah, this, I guess the last thing I want to ask is like, for this first batch of episodes, what, when you first watched it, like, how did you feel? Did you like, even notice that it was like one cohesive sort of thing? Or were you just, or were you watching it like after the fact? I know I was watching, I know I was watching it like day to day, like whenever I could. Mm -hmm. And like, I didn't really feel it was because I kind of like, I know these episodes were aired in the first week. So I kind of had a cohesiveness to it but like i did like i didn't really think of it as a whole arc until like you bring it up when we were planning this like oh this is like mm. the first week of ko's job yeah and it's like it, like looking at that oh yeah this this makes this whole like batch of episodes really good yeah it feels like it has like a beginning middle and end with even some time to have like more like character focus slower episodes like episode five like episode three yeah you know? uh and I think that uh, it kind of reminds me of Amphibia uh, when that aired. They aired with, like the first season in like a oh yeah that, that was weird marathon. Uh, you know, so like every day after work, I would just come home and be like, "Oh, new episodes of uh, Amphibia, gotta go watch them." Yeah. Just like for for like a month, and like it has that same feeling of like uh, like this batch of episodes reminds me of the entire first season of amphibia and or vice versa because it has that same sort of like oh i'm experiencing all this and growing and to love this world and these characters in such a small like condensed amount of time uh amphibia you know that was a whole season and i think you know maybe the show would have got off to a better start if they did like air it fucking normally instead of yeah because i didn't like, like i didn't watch amphibia until like the hiatus between season two and three because it's just yeah. i watched the episode when it aired but then after that i was just like well, there's just too much show man i gotta like i gotta take breaks you know yeah yeah so and then like, it just like season two passed me by i was like oh yeah i need to watch that mm, yeah something that just happens for me amphibia was like i was way more excited i talked about this in a previous episode but i was like way more excited about that than Owl House. Owl House I was still pretty excited about just because mm-hmm. like uh, Owl House I kept up with pretty well. Yeah. Uh, so Yeah, I kept up I tried to keep up with both of those and like uh Owl House I feel like really hit its stride in season two. Yeah. That's when it became like one of my favorite shows on air, you know, instead of like, oh that's like a pretty good yeah, it's like a pretty fun show like how it felt whereas like amphibia like that first season i was like sold i love this yeah i, like, I know se- a lot of people don't like the first season but like there, there's a lot of like they're wrong yeah they're, they are wrong because it's a good yeah. season <laughs> <laughs> because like to me you need that backbone of this like slice of life and just hanging out with the planters you know in yeah. in wartwood and everything and then the second season like at the time it was like holy shit they're end of part one what's this you know the uh, second season are they like adventuring and then like oh they deliver on that yeah you know? and even when like the they like get past the like season 2a and run to season 2b where they're back in wartwood the fact that like you know marcy will show up and they're like all right we're going on this adventure you know for these amount of episodes like it still made it feel like it was the adventure season. It's the best know. Legend of Zelda cartoon I could ask for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're right, because all the 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 Calamity Box, the colors are, like, very Legend of Zelda-y. You know, yeah, the, they're just, the like, Gentiles. the first three dungeons of Ocarina of Time. Mm. Yeah, so, man, that'll do it for this week's episode of Liquid Podcast Turbo. That was, yeah. uh, it, it was fun talking about this batch of episodes all six of these uh you know a little like a peek behind the the curtain here <laughs> to listeners we recorded all of these first four episodes in a row yeah so it, i have like, never done anything like this and it was yeah. super fun yeah it was a lot of fun to like get off i feel like it's in a similar way to okko okay 
Yeah. We've like now since we've gotten all these episodes done in like one big session next session we're just going to be like completely natural just like oh yeah hopefully is, we're into it we're doing it everything but yeah it was a ton of fun yeah you know just like marathoning doing like four podcasts in a row in fact during this day that i'm recording uh i'm doing i have another podcast ah. that i'm going to be recording <laughs> this guy later today that's going to be like a two hour you know podcast me and my friend cody doing the fifth transformers movie uh it's well, gonna be great will that be uh, out by but, now or oh yeah for sure I, I'll, I'll probably have it up like maybe even before this podcast is out you yeah. know just like just just because <clears throat> you know just get it onto the the discuss all monsters patreon or exploded when defeated patreon you know yeah sooner rather than later but Buster, why don't you tell us where we can find you? Hey, I'm Buster Corp. If you enjoyed this episode and like my comments and voice, uh, you can find me at the Buster Corp YouTube channel where I have various videos mm. on various things. I like We talked about JoJo in this episode, and I'm writing a JoJo video, but I don't know Ooh. when it's coming out. I don't think it'll be out by the time this episode's out. Yeah. But, like, I, I just... I've been writing it since December, and it's just taking a long while because I just, mm. like, get brain farts. So that happens. Uh, but you can also find me at Twitter at MusterBully3 where I just tweet about whatever. Sometimes I talk about King Oger because I think that should be mm. well into its run by the time this episode's out. Sometimes yep. I talk about random J-pop I like. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah go, go follow good. the thing. <laughs> and well, also follow you- Wyatt. <laughs> Yeah, and you can find me at youtube.com. Uh, at it's only magic. I do cartoon personal retrospectives on cartoons and sometimes like internet shit like <laughs> AVGN and like, you know, uh, Ronin Dojo Community College DX uh, and stuff like that. So, you know, check that out. I did a huge video on OKKO. OK that was like my last big, like, real video. Uh, I have since done a video on every book i read <laughs> very good listen 2022 which was like a lot of fun to like just review all that stuff uh i recent like at the time of recording it's been like a month since then but like i put tags to so because my friend nick nick tendo Ooh. was like hey you should put the timestamps on there so that i can keep track of where i'm at I'm like okay i'll do that so i spent like a half hour last night uh just doing that uh, and man, I talk way too much about those books. I I read entirely too many books. Uh, I think that's like a hour forty minutes, yeah. something like that. Let me check. It's ridiculous. Uh, but either way, find me at Twitter at uh, uh, twittercom Ranger, Ranger. More just stream of consciousness stuff. But you can see updates to videos that I'm doing and this podcast on there. So if you want to follow along. Go ahead, check that out. You'll hear me talking about some stupid garbage. (laughs) Some PS1 game I'm playing, you know, Speak It In 2 or something like that. I don't know. Uh, But either way, go on there and join us next week uh, for another episode of Lakewood Podcast Turbo. We'll be talking about episodes 7 and 8. See you there. Dude, Jethro's a dumb robot made of fake stuff, like gears. And you're a dumb not robot made of like a million guts. That's a pretty okay number of guts. <laughs>